From the beginning of the movies, Hollywood has always had a fascination with automatic weapons. From the early days of the gangster movies. Then where do you think you'll go? To the north side, like I always knew someday. You can't do that. What do you mean, can't? Who's stopping me? I am. I'm giving you orders for the last There's time. There's only one thing that gets orders and gives orders. And this is it. That's how I got the south side for you, and that's how I'm going to get the north side for you. Some little typewriter, eh? I'm going to write my name all over this town with it in big letters. Hey, stop him, somebody. Get out of my way, Johnny. I'm going to spit. To the patriotic lure of the American fighting man in Europe or the Pacific. Motion picture and television audiences have always been entranced by the excitement and raw power of automatic weapons. The pistol, the rifle, or the shotgun all have their place in the history of America. But in the end, it's the machine gun, or if you prefer, fully automatic weapon that has held each of us in its magical grip. He's getting too big. Yeah. He won't get any bigger. He'll take it before he finds out about these guns. 300 slugs a minute. A man who for a quarter of a century has traveled around the world training men and firing and testing and evaluating small arms. Beginning at U.S. Army Technical Intelligence, Peter Kokalis' skill lies in a combination of research and actual combat experience in many of the world's most volatile arenas. He was the first foreigner invited to present a seminar and test and evaluate all military small arms at the People's Liberation Army's Small Arms Research Institute in Beijing, People's Republic of China. He has worked in Afghanistan, consulted with the Combined Service Forces of the Republic of China in Taiwan and the country of El Salvador. Technical editor of Soldier of Fortune magazine, Peter G. Kokalis is simply the most respected military small arms analyst in the world. Firing full automatic weapons in the real world is not what you see on television or in the movies. If you study this overview of military small arms and future productions of Delta Group Limited, which will focus on specific small arms categories, you can learn to fire military weapons using the proper techniques. In these training sequences, I've selected a group of professional soldiers who will be performing directly under my supervision and guidance. From this moment on, you are a member of that team. This program will be divided into four sections, submachine guns, assault rifles, light machine guns, and heavy machine guns. It's important to remember that this program is only an overview of these particular weapons. So at the end of each section, we'll include important technical data on each weapon from the files of host Peter Kokalis. The first category Peter Kokalis will examine will be submachine guns. In this section, we'll look at the Schmeiser MP-28-2, 
the classic Thompson submachine gun model 1921, the World War II German MP40, the Israeli Uzi, and the Heckler & Koch MP5. Uh, let's start our training session today with submachine guns. By definition, a submachine gun is a shoulder-operated, full automatic weapon that uses pistol ammunition. Uh, as a consequence of the development of the modern assault rifle, submachine guns have very little relevance to modern warfare. And they reached their zenith in World War II, especially uh, through their use by the Soviets. Although they're still encountered in certain counterinsurgency uh, warfare activities and terrorists still use them sometimes, basically in modern warfare, their only use today is in a suppressed mode with silencers on them, uh, and where they're used by uh, special operations groups. Nevertheless, they're an interesting weapon, and they will still sometimes be encountered. Um, the first uh, submachine gun was developed in World War I. Uh, an ancestor of that is the uh, Schmeiser MP28, and it is uh, fairly characteristic of what we call first-generation submachine guns. That is, it's very heavy. It weighs about nine pounds empty. It has a wooden stock, okay, and uh, it's far too heavy for, uh, for the, the weak cartridge that it uses. Uh, all of these guns have been phased out, and as a matter of fact, European arsenals today are filled with literally hundreds of thousands of weapons of this vintage which can't be sold at any price because no one wants them. Uh, shortly after the earliest type of submachine gun was developed, Colonel Thompson in the United States developed the famous Thompson submachine gun which is in caliber 45. Most submachine guns are in nine millimeter, those that are not from Comblock countries. Uh, this weapon, which is called the Chicago typewriter, or goes by any other number of names, is typical of all submachine guns, and that is that they are blowback operated with unlocked breeches uh, because they fire a weak pistol cartridge. Uh, this weapon, uh, has a quick detachable stock. It has a, a cyclic rate, uh, in this case, of about 950, which is far too high for uh, proper fire discipline. Uh, by the time we roll around to World War II, uh, the Germans came up with the first significant evolutionary change in the submachine gun. This is the first time that we see the use of plastics. We see a pistol grip rather than a rifle type stock on a weapon. We have a folding stock for the first time. And we see a lot of, of sheet metal uh, used in the fabrication of the weapon instead of uh, uh, forged steel. Uh, but again, still operated by blowback. And in this case, with a proper cyclic rate of around 550 rounds per minute. Uh, after World War II, submachine gun, although their use in the military began to decline, submachine gun continued uh, in their development, and the most significant development shortly after World War II is the famous Israeli Uzi. It was developed by the Israelis because in the late 40s and early 50s, they needed a weapon that was very cheap to manufacture, uh, and they needed them in large quantity. And that is a salient feature of submachine guns, that they are inexpensive to make compared to uh, battle rifles. Uh, again, this weapon has a cyclic rate of around 550 rounds per minute. It has a grip safety, which in my opinion is a very bad idea because uh, under a stress environment, sometimes the hand will slip off of the grip safety and completely shut the weapon down. Uh, other than that, it's a, it's a pretty good design, except that it also uses a technique that has been much copied uh, with a magazine and the pistol grip. The concept here is that a person by hand finds hand is supposed to be able to change magazines quickly. 
in actual uh, combat, uh, this is pr not proven to be the case. And what we sacrifice with a weapon of this type is the proper grip to frame angle. Anytime you have a, a submachine gun like th the Uzi or the Mac, where you have the magazine in the, in the pistol grip, you have to have a straight pistol grip, and you have ruined the ergonomics of the weapon. Far better to go to a, a submachine gun like this, the famous Heckler & Koch MP5, which puts the magazine back up where it belongs and permits us to get a proper grip to frame angle. Another salient feature of this submachine gun, which is probably state-of-the-art and just about as far as we're going to see submachine gun evolve, uh, is the fact that it, unlike these other weapons, it fires from a closed bolt. All right. Why is that important? That's important because invariably, when we fire a weapon like this from the open bolt, when the bolt slams forward and hits the chamber of the barrel, it will jar the weapon and jar our aim. This submachine gun, which fires from the closed bolt position, uh, gets around that and permits people to use the submachine gun accurately in semi-automatic fire, which is something that has often been neglected. But in law enforcement applications, where we want to, where we have a hostage situation, maybe we want to be able to shoot just one shot, and that shot's got to be very accurately aimed, okay, because uh, you don't have a second chance, uh, and you may have somebody in, in front of the, uh, of the person you're trying to shoot, so a closed bolt submachine gun is preferable. The Schmeiser MP28 II, a descendant of the world's first widely used submachine gun, the MP-18 has a caliber of 9 millimeter parabellum, an empty weight of 8.8 .8 pounds, a 32-round magazine, and a cyclic rate of fire of 500 rounds per minute. The Thompson submachine gun model 1921, the famous weapon in most classic gangster movies, is a 45 caliber ACP, a 33 and 3 quarter inch weapon that weighs 10.75 pounds empty. It has an 800 RPM firing rate. The World War II MP40 is a 9 millimeter parabellum weapon that weighs 8 pounds 14 ounces empty and can fire 500 rounds per minute. It's sometimes mistakenly referred to as the Schmeiser, although Hugo Schmeiser had nothing to do with its design. The Uzi, a second generation submachine gun, is in use worldwide and is manufactured in Israel and is famous for its simplicity of design and reliability in awkward situations. Its nine millimeter parabellum with a 32-round magazine weighing in at 8 pounds empty. The Heckler & Koch MP5A2 is used by different West German police organizations and border guards. Many are also used by the Swiss and Netherlands Armed Services. It's also favored by the British SAS for close-quarter combat and U.S. SWAT teams. It is chambered for the 9mm Parabellum cartridge, 5.4 pounds empty, 26 inches in length, and 700 rounds per minute cyclic rate of firing power. When we start out with a pistol and add the selective fire option, we end up with something that's generically called a machine pistol. The problem with these weapons is that because they are so lightweight, they usually have extremely high cyclic rates. In the case of this weapon, which is the German Schnellfeuer, or Mauser 712, the cyclic rate is approximately 1,250 rounds per minute. In addition, there's a lot of hammer bite involved with firing this weapon, and you have to be extremely careful in the where you put the firing hand.
category, we'll examine assault rifles, and we'll be featuring the MP44, the AK-47, both Chinese and Russian models, and the M16 and the VZ-58. The demise of the submachine gun is largely a function of the rise of a weapon that we'll be talking about next, the assault rifle. The characteristics of an assault rifle are threefold. One, it's a lightweight battle weapon. Two, it's capable of semi-automatic or full automatic fire. And three, it is invariably chambered for an intermediate size cartridge. The world's first assault rifle was produced in Germany in the Second World War. The MP44 or STG44, which stands for Sturmgewehr, which means assault rifle, is a true representation of this species. Has chambered for an intermediate sized cartridge, capable of full automatic fire, and in its day, relatively lightweight, although today it would be faulted by the fact that it weighs 11 pounds. Um, the Russians were so impressed with the fighting on the Eastern Front uh, with the MP44 that they took off on that and developed what is probably the most famous, infamous, and ubiquitous assault rifle in the world today, and that is the Kalashnikov. The AK-47, or this specimen, which is an AKM, is also a true assault rifle, chambered for an intermediate-sized cartridge, the 7.62 by 39 mm com block, capable of full automatic fire, and relatively lightweight at about seven and a half pounds. It is rugged, reliable, and possibly as many as 50 million of these rifles have been produced. It's not perfect. It's capable of only medi mediocre accuracy, and it has a very noisy selector lever, which is certainly a defect from the combat user's point of view. Another rifle of this type is the very rare, at least in this country, Czech VZ-58, which, although it vaguely resembles a Kalashnikov and is chambered, in fact, for the same round, has an entirely different operating mechanism. The other assault rifle that we'll be firing and talking about today is the good old M16. This is the free world's equivalent of the Kalashnikov, and after years of improvement, it is every bit as good. Generally speaking, we want to exercise the same kind of fire discipline uh, and burst size with an assault rifle when it's fired in full auto as we do uh, with a submachine gun. Firing position is a little different because the we are using a rifle here, and so the firing position will be exactly that of a rifle, which is the firing arm normal or perpendicular uh, to, the to the axis of the body and the support arm down and flush up against the magazine. The MP-44 was the first true assault rifle and was used extensively on the Russian front during World War II. It's a German weapon and is no longer in production. Formerly a favorite of East German border guards, it's been replaced by the AK-47. It's chambered for the 7.92 millimeter Kurtz with an effective range of 500 meters. It contains a 30 round detachable box magazine has a weight of 11.5 pounds empty and a cyclic rate of 500 rounds per minute. The AK-47 is as relevant as today's evening news and can be seen in the hands of armies and terrorists from around the world. This was the Red Army's answer to the German MP-44. It's chambered for the 7.62 by 39 millimeter Comblock cartridge with an empty weight of 9.5 pounds and a cyclic rate of 600 rounds per minute. It uses a 30 round magazine.
The American M16 has had many stages of evolution and was with the American foot soldier in Vietnam. The M16 is chambered for the 5.56 millimeter NATO cartridge with an empty weight of seven pounds and a cyclic rate of 700 to 950 rounds per minute. It employs 20 and 30 round magazines. The VZ-58 is manufactured in Czechoslovakia and looks very much like the Soviet AK-47, but the outward appearance is where the similarity ends. The VZ-58 is a relatively low-priced weapon, chambered for the standard 7.62 by 39 millimeter comblock cartridge. It has an empty weight of 6.9 pounds and a cyclic rate of 800 rounds per minute. The next category is considered light machine guns and general purpose machine guns. This category includes the BAR, the FN Minimi, the Bren, the RPK, the M60, the MG34, MG42, and the Lewis gun. Machine guns, when tactical air support and artillery fire is not available, machine guns together with mortars represent the battalion's principal means of fire support. They are the most single important firearm in the battalion complement of weapons. The concept of light machine guns began with the heavy use of machine guns themselves in World War I. One of the best examples of a light machine gun to come out of World War I was the Lewis gun. Lewis gun is uh, pan-fed, has a cyclic rate of around 550 rounds per minute and is generally one of the lighter weapons of this type that was used in World War I. It's been long obsolete. There are a lot of problems with the mechanism. It breaks extractors frequently. Firing pins break. Uh, it's a very touchy weapon. Shortly after World War I, John Moses Browning designed and, uh, and they produced the BAR, the Browning Automatic Rifle. It became the principal squad support weapon in the United States Army through World War II in Korea. It served well, but it has many faults. It lacks a quick change barrel. The magazines are fed from the bottom and therefore we can use a magazine of only limited capacity, in this case, 20 rounds. And the gas system is not made out of stainless steel. All of those criticisms were answered when the British adopted the Bren gun. The Bren gun is without doubt the finest magazine-fed light machine gun ever fielded. And in a matter, as a matter of fact, it is still used by the British Army 
in caliber 762 NATO. This particular specimen is in 303 British. It is a very early model, but as you can see, it has a quick change barrel, stainless steel regulator, and the magazine, since it is fed from the top, can be of greater capacity. The biggest fad in recent years in battalion machine guns has been the so-called general purpose machine gun, or GPMG. The first GPMG was fielded by the Germans in World War II as the MG-34. The idea behind a general purpose machine gun is that it is supposed to be light enough to be carried by troops at the squad level, yet heavy enough to serve in the sustained fire role at battalion level. The problem with this concept is, is that most of these weapons are neither fish nor fowl. In other words, they're too heavy to serve as squad automatic weapons, but not heavy enough for proper sustained fire use. The MG-34, furthermore, was a machinist nightmare, and the German government was never able to produce them in quantity to serve their needs. So they went to what is probably the most famous gun to ever come out of World War II, the MG-42, which has been called by many Hitler Zipper. Uh, it's called Hitler Zipper because it has a cyclic rate of close to 1,300 rounds per minute. But uh, it does fire uh, from the open bolt position, as most of these weapons do to prevent cook-offs. Uh, the problem with this weapon was one of uh, premature unlocking. And more of these guns have blown up in civilian hands than any other uh, type of machine gun. Many of the features of the MG-42 were copied on what is undoubtedly one of the worst machine guns ever adopted by the United States military, the M60. The M60, which is still in use, although now being phased out by the saw, is a bad weapon from the muzzle to the buttstock. No less than three major components in this weapon can be put in backwards, the sear, the piston, and the firing pin. Another uh, attempt at a squad weapon is a member of the Kalashnikov series. This one, a Finnish RPK. Uh, it's light, weighs about 13 pounds, uh, and it can be easily carried. It can be faulted, however, by the virtue of its not having a quick change barrel and the fact that it is fed by magazines from the bottom although a 75 round drum was designed that obviates some of those problems. The latest attempt at a true squad automatic weapon is the weapon adopted by the United States Army called the M249 or the FN Minimi, which is in caliber 5.56 NATO. Uh, this weapon weighs only 15 and a half pounds. It can be fed by either magazines or belts it has a quick change barrel. In essence, it has all of the features that we are looking for in a squad automatic weapon. And this weapon and weapons like it point to the wave of the future as far as infantry machine guns. Every weapon here has a bipod. Some of the weapons here can be mounted on a tripod. In 99% of the cases in actual combat, the weapon should be fired from the prone position not the hip assault position, not standing, not kneeling, not any other position, just the prone position. When there's contact, gentlemen, you immediately go into the prone position and start firing and maneuvering from the prone position. You never fire from a standing position with any of these weapons. That's why we put bipods on them, so that they can be fired from the prone. The Lewis gun has an international history that caught on with the American Army late into its development. In reality, it was the first of the true light machine guns. Chambered for the standard 303 British service cartridge and 49.2 inches long, it weighs 27 pounds with a 450 to 500 rounds per minute cyclic rate.
The Browning automatic rifle, remembered by many as a famous weapon to emerge from World War II, actually was designed by John M. Browning in 1917. The BAR is chambered for the U.S. 30-06 cartridge. With a weight of 19.4 pounds, it has a cyclic rate of 550 rounds per minute. The Bren is a British Czech effort and was originally designed as a replacement for both the Lewis gun and the Vickers. It's a favorite of Peter Kukalis in this category and is chambered for the 303 British cartridge and is 45.5 inches long and weighs just over 22 pounds. Its magazine feeds from the top and has a 30 round staggered column detachable box type The MG-34 is a German development, which was the world's first general-purpose machine gun that could be carried by an infantry squad and could even be effective against low-flying aircraft. It's chambered for the 7.92mm German service cartridge, 48 inches in length, and fires at a rate of 800 to 900 rounds per minute. It also weighs in at 25 and a half pounds. The MG-42 is another German development that debuted in 1942 in North Africa and the USSR. It was soon used on every front of World War II. It's chambered for the 7.92 millimeter German service cartridge with a 48.03 inch length and weighs in at 25.4 pounds. It has a rate of fire of up to 1,300 rounds per minute. The RPK is a Soviet product and is the standard Warsaw Pact squad automatic weapon. This particular weapon is inadequate in the sustained fire roll, as it has no quick change barrel. It's chambered for the 7.62 by 39 millimeter comblock cartridge with a length of 40 inches, a 30 and 40 round magazine, a 75 round drum, and a rate of fire of 660 rounds per minute. The American M60, carried by U.S. troops in Vietnam, is a general-purpose machine gun which incorporates features of the Lewis gun and the German FG-42, chambered for the NATO cartridge, and a weight of 23 pounds, it's 43.5 inches long. The cyclic rate is 550 rounds per minute. The FN Minimi recently was adopted by the U.S. Armed Services as the M249. It's a squad automatic weapon. It's capable of both belt and magazine feeding, especially reliable in the belt-fed mode. It's chambered for the 5.56 millimeter NATO cartridge, is 15.5 pounds in weight and 41 inches long. It has a cyclic rate of fire of 750 to 950 rounds per minute.
technical category combines both medium machine guns and heavy machine guns. Peter Kukalis has selected two representative weapons, the 1917 A1 Browning and the Browning 50 caliber M2 heavy barrel. When we need real fire support, the general purpose machine gun won't cut it. When we have to fire along fixed lines or in the support of our battalions assaulting troops, we need a weapon that's on a stable firing platform and that is capable of sustained fire without the barrels overheating. The two finest weapons that have ever been fielded for that purpose are the Browning Model 1917A1 water-cooled medium machine gun in caliber 30-06 and Mother Deuce, the Browning M2 heavy barrel 50 caliber machine gun. These weapons provide the stability on their on their tripods that we need for accurate fire over advancing assault troops. Uh, whenever possible, gentlemen, we need to set these weapons up behind cover and concealment as low as possible to the ground. And if possible, they should be fired from the prone position, although because of the large cradle on this weapon, it's not possible to do so. The Browning 1917A1, which saw little service in World War I, was extensively used by U.S. forces in World War II and the Korean War. It has a water-cooled jacket surrounding the barrel and is an excellent weapon design. It's chambered for the 30 6 standard U.S. service cartridge. The model 1917A1 has a length of 38.5 inches and is mounted on a tripod to be used in the sitting position or preferably in the prone position. The weight of the gun without water or tripod is 32 pounds. It has a cyclic rate of 550 rounds per minute. The Browning M2 heavy barrel, 50 caliber, is the finest heavy machine gun in use in the world today. From the original in 1921, has evolved a series of heavy machine guns which have been used for a variety of purposes. Although it has a history of being employed as everything from an infantry to an aircraft weapon, we will be looking at the tripod mounted ground version. It's 65 inches in length, has a weight of 128 pounds, including the tripod, and a cyclic rate of 550 rounds per minute. Okay.
automatic weapons. They represent excitement, engineering excellence, and when used correctly, outstanding firepower. The key is correct technique. Fire control, firing position, correct operation of the weapon, and many other areas that Peter Kokalis has discussed are central to your understanding and skill in firing these and other automatic weapons. View this home video program again and again as you perfect your knowledge of the proper techniques regarding these weapons. And look for future productions by the Delta Group Limited as you expand your skills in this exciting field.